spend an awful lot of time in Massachusetts. Seems like every other week you've got a meeting waiting there. Business must be booming or could something else be moving in the air up there. You say that it's important for our future. An executive on his way up has got to play the part. And each time duty calls, you've got to give it all. You've got with all your heart. When whoever's in New England's... <coughs> <coughs> See you guys. No cuts. Let's finish this up. When whoever's in New England's through with you, and Boston has better things to do, you know it's not too late, cause you'll always have a place to come back to. Two, three. When whoever's in New England's through with you. Wow, sorry, I totally messed that up. Talk about a cough at the wrong place. So I, it's because I took a drink of coffee before I started to sing. And it wasn't the right thing to do. When whoever's in New England's through with you. And Boston finds better things to do. It's a pretty song. Let's see, who requested that one? Um, Wanda, that was for you. So hey, Wanda, hi to your hubby Clayton too, by the way. Just thinking about doing a husband's club. What do you guys think? A couple of you have messaged me that your husbands watch. So husband's club, maybe? Hey, hi guys, welcome to Bell's Bargains. My name is Amy. If this is your first time here, we start every video with a song. And I don't do retakes. So pretty much you get what you get, like the cough in the middle of that one. So, oh, and while I'm at it, there's another request for a song. And so I'm gonna do it right now, really quickly. So this is for Christy and Beth. Um, it's kind of short. I like big butts and I cannot lie. That's all I can sing. Because any other lyrics to that song would be beep, 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 beep. So there you go, Christy and Beth. There's your, there's your request. I like big, hey Becky, look at her. Anyway, okay. So let's go, you guys. Today is to is totally easy Tuesday. It is totally easy to, yes, it is totally easy Tuesday today. I have some notes before we get into the crafts and I have a lot of crafts for you. I have to learn how to back up on my crafts. All right. So, um, if you're new to this channel, just so you know, everything on this channel is Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, and only Dollar Tree. Do you know why? I'm going to tell you a secret. The reason this channel is only Dollar Tree is because everything at the Dollar Tree is a dollar, people, a dollar. And when my channel gets big enough, I'm selling those t-shirts. I'm going to sell coffee mugs, I think, that say that. Because I'm always, this is a bad coffee mug, but it's so funny. Oh, I'm spilling. I was going to cover up the bad word, but I couldn't read it backwards. Um, yeah, here, I'll cover up the bad word. I know I swear a lot. I'm very sorry. I try to be good. One and two are lies. You can, mm, off. Okay, so a friend gave me that. What kind of friend gives you that kind of mug? I don't know. One that knows me? Hmm, maybe that. All right, so um, if you're new though, all you have to do is click down below and you're gonna see all the uploads that I do every week. I do four a week, Totally Easy Tuesday, Theme Thursday, Foodie Friday, Shopping Saturdays. And it's all Dollar Tree, I've already said that. And we start every video with a song, did I say that? And we're a little crazy here, did I say that? And I love to talk to you guys. So consider subscribing, you're gonna come back. You might leave, but you'll come back. You'll be like, I wanna know how she finished that. <laughs> you can come back. But please consider subscribing. Oh my gosh, you guys, for my regular subscribers, can you believe it? We're blowing up. I'm at like 570 something. A week ago, I was pushing to get to 500. So it is blowing up. Super happy about that. So thank you guys very much. Let's go over a few things I have to talk about. So I mentioned, you guys want to do a subscribers challenge. So I think I am going to do a subscribers challenge. So I need some feedback from you guys today. And then I will announce the rules on Tuesday of next week. So I'm not going to do it this week. And they go because I'm gonna wait for you guys to give me some feedback. So here's the thing. I wanna do a subscribers challenge and I wanna know what five things you think would be good or do you want me to pick the five things? And then um, you guys are so good whenever I mention vets. And so obviously you're a pretty patriotic group. 
And so I thought, what if we did a patriotic theme craft together? And who was it who, Kathy told me on one of her messages that she adds yellow to all of her patriotic um, crafts because yellow represents remembrance. I didn't know that. I will be from now on. And so I thought, what if we did a patriotic craft and we added yellow into it somehow? Because there are so many patriotic holidays, as she pointed out. And um, there is a, well, hold on. So I was thinking, I'm going to jump ahead here. But so what do you guys think? Patriotic craft, how many items? Because I think somebody had said five, but if we're going to, I think we have to have some ground rules. So you can go pick up five things from the Dollar Tree, but you can use your own supplies for building it, i.e. glue or, um, you know, twine, like the basics. And then when we're all done, who was it who said, Shelly says that I should get to pick one of your crafts and you guys send it to me. <laughs> LOL. Okay, I'm not going to do that because I don't want you guys to spend any money to mail anything to me, but I did have an idea. So if we do the subscribers challenge, five items, use your own stuff at home to build it, Let's go with the theme of patriotic. And in the end, I get to pick one of those that's my favorite, and then you donate it to something. Or we could just in general say we're going to make these crafts and then donate them to like a VFW if they do fundraisers or something like that. Let me know your thoughts on that one also. Okay, because uh, one of my favorite movies is Pay It Forward, and so I think it's really good to do things. Like we would get all this enjoyment out of it and then to pass that enjoyment on to somebody else. All right, and because um, I feel like I know all you guys. You guys feel like, you know, of course you feel like you know me. You get to look at my face every time I do a video. So you know me. I'm like, you're this green dot on my phone. That's what you guys know. But you message me and I feel like I know you. So I'm really thankful for the friendships that we're building on this channel. And then also Kathy told me that Crafting Cousins, if you haven't seen their channel, they're really cute. They're cousins that do crafting. Hence, Crafting Cousins. But they had a video um, where they showed what the meaning of the flag being folded is. I'm actually linking that down below. So if you guys want to go there and watch that, but I'm going to ask you to do me one favor. Do you know what it is? If you go and you watch it, first of all, like their video, and then please make a comment that Amy from Bella's Bargains sent you over. Now, why do I ask you guys to do that? Because every time you do, every time you throw the name out there, it, it, you know, then people start to know who I am and what my channel is, which only helps me grow. So that's why I ask you to do it. And also so that other crafters know I'm sending somebody to their channel because I think that's really important. Um, so there's a couple of reasons for doing that. But please, if you ever go to visit another channel because I've linked something, let them know that I sent you there. All right. So um, today is Totally Easy Tuesday and it's garden theme. What? What? Yeah, it's gardens. We got gardens going on. And before I get into that, um, a couple things. Amy from Bargains Mama. Bargain Mama, sorry, suggested that I do Christmas in July. Okay, so I have my July all scheduled and I don't have my Christmas crafts out. But what I am going to do, Amy, I'm actually going <coughs> to, there's that coffee again. I'm actually going to do a video of all of crafts that I did last December because I had so few subscribers and I did some really beautiful crafts. If I, if I don't say so myself. So I'm going to do a, uh, to, uh, one of those videos where I throw a bunch of them in there in July. And that'll probably be a bonus video. I'm not sure. It's going to be one of those videos in July. And then I didn't do the cling test wrap when I did the, um, when I did this last foodie Friday. So just know I'm going to do, I did the cling test wrap, but I didn't actually cling the wrap to anything to do that test. So I will do that on foodies Friday. Who pointed that out to me? I don't remember now. I, okay. Don't know. And then, um, the last thing is cracker Jackie. She was like, well, how many days till Disney? Do you know what? I didn't even look it up, did I? It's like 48-ish. Anyway, I'm, it doesn't matter. Disney's coming up. <laughs> and so she asked, like, how many days till Disney? And then she's taking her niece and her nephew. I think they're like 6 and 10. She's taking them to Disneyland. She's like, so what are you doing for, you know, for your Disney stuff? She gave them a Disney countdown calendar. I also gave that to my grandchildren. And then she make, she's making them Disney piggy banks, which I think is super cute. And then she's making them um, bracelets with like their phone number and stuff on them. So I was going to throw it out there and like, hey, do you guys have any good ideas for cute little things to do for, well, I know me and Cracker Jackie are taking art because we're both crazy crackers. <laughs> so we're going to take our grandkids to Disney World. So like, if you guys had any ideas, that'd be great to share. And, um, and then maybe it's something that I could do here on the channel. All right. Last thing. What is the last thing? I think that's it. Is that really it? Is that all I have to say to you people? Should we dive right in? Thursday is houses, by the way. 
Uh, super late video today. Most important thing of all, this video's late. Do you want to know why? I did a whole new way of doing my video. You guys got to let me know if you like it or you don't like it. And the reason I did it is because Kathy, our teacher, she was watching old videos and she messaged me on one of my old videos and she says, I like the voiceover. Well, I didn't voiceover. In the very beginning, I was talking while I did the craft. But the problem is it took so long to get through the craft. So then I started speeding them up and adding music. Well, then this morning as I was getting ready to upload, I was like, wait a second, maybe I should just voice over my speed sped up parts but still do the part in the beginning where I explained it all to you. So I tried that today. Let me know what you think. I don't know, you guys. You just have to let me know. All right, let's dive in. First of all, when I did the challenge with Danny, I made that little purse, and I was like, I want to put a brooch on here or something. So the other day, I was pull going through my crafts and pulling out stuff of, like, I'll put, there's a little bit of this material left, and I was like, why didn't I just put flowers on that purse? So I did. just want to show this to you again, because this is the, just that faux leather and a roll of their material there at the Dollar Tree. And this is the cutest little purse in the whole wide world. Look at that. I even put the leather where I attached that and on the corners. So cute. And it just was Aileen's tacky glue. Yeah. But didn't this just pop it? Adding those flowers on? Love it. Okay. All right. So on the video, I believe the first craft you're going to see is this little number. <laughs> it's so silly, but it is totally easy Tuesday. Don't forget. Somebody asked me for ladybugs. I don't remember who now. Well, Rita, I think you had ladybugs and some things you wanted to see too. Um, and this was a headband. You'll see in the video. It looks super cute on my hat, actually, doesn't it? You can make a ladybug hat. Oh, hey, guys. Super easy. They're selling hat. This is a Dollar Tree hat. Just put one of these on there. So um, you'll see how I did this on the video. I just bought a headband that was ladybug ears. And it was probably like their costumes for kids. I made these two little ladybugs. And how cute are these? You could put them on a dowel and put them into a plant, you know, or whatever. Super cute little ladybugs, super easy. I don't know where I'm going next. Let's go to this one. So when I did lemons, I had all these limes and I didn't know what to do with the limes. So I did this. <laughs> this is, I'm gonna show you the back. This is one of those buckets, the metal buckets that has the French written on it, cute. But what I did was I took it to a different place and went to the farmer's market. This is the top of one of the garden signs. You'll see that on the video. And these were those little green plants that I have all over my wall. They come wrapped in burlap. And of course I saved the burlap and all I did, it makes it look like it's lined in burlap. I say all this on the video, you're gonna hear things twice now. And then just feel how cute. I also say that you could add a little sign. You could put anything in here and add a little sign. I could have added another one of those chalkboard signs that said limes 10 cents each or something like that. But I'm not sure I'll keep the limes, limes in there. You know, like, I don't know. Where to next? Let's go to this one because it's right here. So they had in these these bouquets, which are butterflies. They're all butterflies, but they look like flowers, but they're butterflies. And um, I just liked the airy and fullness of it. I had the metal butterfly on a stick. And so I put it into one of the metal. These come in two sizes, taller and shorter. This is a taller one because obviously I went for the tall on this. And um, it's so simple. I just sort of threw those in there. I put some butterflies on here and notice I pull their, their, their wings out on the top. Um, I think this came out super cute, really easy and just a fresh, airy spring. Okay, not that it's spring anymore, but you guys, it's whatever. All right, so it's garden. Today is garden and I was going for easy. And then there's this little number. Now they sell at the Dollar Tree, they sell the over the door hangers. So normally this would have two things that came out and hung it over the door. Well, I had de I had taken some parts off of it for something else and I have this leftover piece, which is good. You can make this, but you're gonna have to remove the hooks that go over the door because by adding the truck on here, it makes it too tall. Now I made this to put my gardening tools on. I don't garden. <laughs> okay, but it's a really cute idea, right? So you hang your gloves, your little trowel and all that. And I am I can put a screw or a nail through here on either side to hang it. And it just you, gives this little truck the cutest little purpose. Isn't that great? So easy, so easy and so cute. A little garden tool hanger. Then um, I had picked up these signs uh, a while ago that said weed, weed it and reap. And I was like, gosh, what am I going to do with that? Like, it's cute. It's a really cute saying. And I was like, maybe I'll just add a bow to it. Maybe I'll just pop the sign up. And then it came to me. And so I did this. So I put it on one of those black chalkboards. 
You'll see in the video, I this had words on it and the lines were here. I wanted the lines. So I got all the words off and the way I did that was kind of soaked them with a wet paper towel and then took the scrapey thing and scraped them off. But the other side is blank, so you can do it this way if you don't want to do all that work. And then added a, a heavier twine handle, tied on my little trusty dusty chalk writer, just tied it on there. And then this is a plant calendar so you can write it and when you planted it or whatever or it could be a watering schedule or a, you know whatever super cute little gardening thing love it weed it and reap great use of that little sign actually love that so also there what i, I deconstructed two or three hanging signs this garden hanging signs so one of them that i took apart this was on the top of it and it was just a, there was nothing on it. It was just a potted plant like thing. So I add a tumbling block and I embellish the front of it just to make this cute little spring. I don't know why I'm doing spring. It's not spring. I don't know. Cause I was doing garden. That's why you guys, you're going to forgive me, right? I want to point this out. I say it on the video, but when I put a tumbling tower block for a stand, you never put it directly on the bottom because you need it to lean back slightly so it'll stand. If you put it level with the bottom, they don't stand, they fall over. So just remember that, always like what, maybe an eighth of an inch up from the bottom, just so it'll slightly lean back to stand up. But I do think this is very cute and it's with a napkin, a napkin. Yep, you got it, a napkin, which I'm not putting the napkins in my guest bathroom so they get used. This might be my favorite, no it's not, it could be. I love this piece literally love this piece so i took all the elements from the hanging signs again you'll see in the video i soak it's like this okay there's they're like this they're on the press board so i soaked them so i could scrape the graphic off of it because i loved the colors on this they're just so vibrant and pretty and look at what a great match for the pics that i put in here and then these were part of the sign right but they look so cute just sitting in here like you're getting ready to like your plant night like, Go back in, you stupid thing. <laughs> Shouldn't have pulled that out because it was in there pretty good, obviously, right? Um, and then the other one falls out. Well, there you go, Amy. So just adding these. And then I just took the, the other pieces and stuck them in here. Just It's like mixing cartoon with reality. But it came out so cute. I love this piece. It's just so pretty. Look at that. And I this... Like, it came out a really little wrinkly, but it's really cute. It's good. I love it. So this is this pot, by the way. I covered up the words on this side. All right. Where to next? Where to next? Where to next? Oh, my gosh. Do you guys remember when I bought the little watering can and I said I'm going to redo it? So I did. Look at the butterfly on top with his wings all, you know, I bent him up. I soaked these in water, so I got two butterflies out of it. The only thing I would do differently maybe is paint this white before I decoupaged it, but Dollar Tree doesn't sell white chalk paint yet. You're going to hear these things twice now because I did a voiceover. Anyway, super cute little decor piece. Very cute. Love it. My little watering can. Um, who asked me to do a garden flag? Dang it. Um, Michelle. Michelle, you asked me to do a garden flag. I think I answered you on Sunday, and today's Tuesday, right? Didn't I? I was like, okay, well, I'll see what I can find. I'll look for some supplies. So I'm doing garden today, and I'm like, I was all done doing my crafts and I was like, dang it though. I should really try and do a garden flag because I'm doing garden stuff. So I did, Michelle, and I hope you love it. This is a garden flag. Bop! It's so cute. It's hard because the light's coming through it. First of all, this is a tote. So I just want you guys to know on the very top of it, you can put your rod through. Well, I can't get in there right now, but anyway, you can put the rod through it to hang it right there. I don't have a garden flag hanger, so I couldn't hang it and show it to you. But how cute is this? I made it with um, a dish towel and burlap from a burlap tote that I bought there and I cut the handles off. Mm -hmm. Michelle, do you love the garden flag? This is my first garden flag ever and I'm actually really in love with it. I think it's super cute. So there it is, this first garden flag. I think that came out really great. Um, I had... The water, this should have been, this should have been, I should have done this with watermelons, but I already had it in garden, so I forgot I had a watermelon truck, but watermelon sugar. Okay, so this, look at the truck on this wheel wreath. That's such a cool thing. I love how this looks, and I embellished the truck. 
by putting some popsicle sticks on to make it. Anyways, this is easy and looks super adorable. I love this piece. Absolutely love it. I love that this ribbon is such a match for their accent color on here. All Dollar Tree supplies, you know that. I don't have to tell you, right? Um, I'm not sure I would use this. I have glue strings on here. I'm not sure I would use this ribbon now that I look at it, but you can change the ribbon out because I think that looks kind of Christmassy. So it could totally make it Christmas. That'd be easy to do. Anyway, love that. And then maybe this is my favorite piece. I'm not sure. I took apart one sign and it had these words on it. It says we were meant to be. And in the video, I say I'm going to put them on a stick, but then I don't. I end up doing this. Mm, it's so cute, isn't it? These are just the, the boxes, you know, and st a stair stepped them like that. Added some foliage in them and yeah how cute outline the signs with black to make them pop because they look like you know file drawer label cabinet things yes so easy why i washed them stained them with brown paint and water brown paint that i just bought not that long ago at the dollar tree it was in one of my halls they're archaeology brown i don't know whatever anyway this came out adorable Adorable. This, by the way, is not available for taking. I actually have a spot for this. So you can't, whoever wins this week can't have this one. And then um, this one is also not available because I made it for my house. So two crafts that aren't available in this run is just those two. Anything else is available. This is, I've been wanting to make this forever. You guys know what this is? It's a rain chain. Made out of the buckets from the wedding area and one of the, the spring windmill welcome signs, which comes with a hook already. It's a rain chain. So it's going to go outside on the side of my patio cover. How cute. Isn't that adorable? And this is just the chains. They sell the, hang, they sell the plant hang, hangers and there's chains on them. So I just deconstructed that, put it all together, put some holes in the bottom of my buckets. And um, I just took like... Um, a screwdriver and punch through it rain chain rain chain yes oh all right the last thing i'm going to show you is for wait who wanted to see this dang it now i gotta go back and look so somebody asked me what i was gonna do with the um, 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 um. i gotta find it here what i was gonna do with the star oh amy amy you want to see it just amy l uh, the starfish candles. So this has nothing to do with garden, but I told you I would do it Tuesday. So here it is. It's the last thing on the video. This is so cool, isn't it? These were three separate votive holders. And so there's sand and the starfish and some shells, sand shells. And then I took the my votive and I covered it in seashells. Wait, turn it on. Sorry. And look at that, first of all, how cute. It's a great thing you could do with any of those little candles. And then glued it all together, put a nice little embellishment on the top. Is that the cutest? Isn't that the cutest? I think this came out, so, now it's such a substantial piece for $3. What would this cost you at a home decor store? I can't even imagine. And I've got sand and seashells in the middle and the starfish are on the bottom with some other seashells. I mean, what would this cost you? Yeah, $3. Let's look at it one more time. So cute. All right, guys, those are the crafts that you're going to see. So everybody, have a great day, a great week, a great life. Tell me what you think about the subscribers challenge. And then next Tuesday, I'll give you all the rules. I'm sorry this video is late. You also have to tell me which way you like better, if you like the music or if you like me doing the voiceover. Because do you really want to hear me talk through the whole video? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. All right, guys, have a great, did I already say it? Have a great day, great week, a great life. I need to go take a nap. <clears throat> it's so hot in Arizona right now. Bless you all. And from your singing crafty crafter, happy hunting at your local Dollar Tree. Toodles. Enjoy the video.
so this is just a headband that's the ladybug and all I'm gonna do is deconstruct it and make a couple of ladybugs super easy and I'm just gonna take this off maybe maybe not Anyway, I'm just gonna make two ladybugs. I'm not gonna do anything with them, I'm just gonna make them because there's so many ways that we could use the ladybugs, but for now I'm just gonna make a couple of them out of this headband. All right, so let's do that. So I just took the headband apart, and at first I thought I was gonna glue the two of them together, which I don't know why, that would've looked stupid. So anyway, all I did was put some hot glue at the top and pinch it almost to make it look like a leaf and then um, cleared that pom-pom of the wire that was stuck on. Glued it on there and just twisted a piece to make it look like it's little antennas and then put it underneath. Now the only thing I might have done differently in hindsight is I might have taken a sharpie and put a line down the middle so that it looked like it was two separate um, wings but anyway super cute super easy a great way just to make a little ladybug decoration all right so i have a bunch of lemons i have one of these um buckets some burlap which came off the little greenery bushes that I bought and used a couple of tumbling blocks this was um, the top part of one of the signs I've taken apart and I'm gonna use that basically what I'm gonna do is put it on here it's gonna say farmers market and put some burlap and fill it with the limes and I'm gonna use the tumbling block to Pull the sign out so that it's more even because the tin goes like in so okay anyway super easy Let's so the circumference of the the circumference of the bottom of the tin versus the circumference of the top of the tin is different so I had to put the tumbling block on there to pull the bottom of the farmers market sign out so that it would um, line up straight so when you're looking at it it wasn't tilted in it was it was straight up and down then the burlap you know I didn't have a burlap piece to fill the entire inside so using these little pieces gave the illusion of burlap lining the inside of the bucket and that's really all I was after and I just spot hot glued it just to put it on there in hindsight I probably should have put it on before I put the sign on <laughs> but that's okay I make the mistakes and then um, just piecing the pieces around. I was shy one, so I cut one in half to cover the back side of it. In the end, it's fine. It really did give the illusion that it was lined with burlap, and I liked that. Also, you could add to this craft a little sign, one of those little chalkboard signs. You could attach it to the farmer's market that could say limes 10 cents each or something like that. I didn't do that because I don't know that I'll leave limes in it, but you could. And then filled it with the limes, and these are just those really large stems, and I took it apart and added some leaves. Okay, so this is a hanging sign, and it says... Um, says we were meant to be but I feel like this is um anyway I don't like the way I'm gonna take it all apart I'm gonna take this right here and make it a little standing sign I'm gonna use one of these napkins and put hello spring on it and then just have it be a standing sign and then these I'm actually gonna put on to a um a stick that came from some other sign and put them all together so that you can sort of see them because right now they when they're on that thing they just sort of hang and twist and all that so I'm gonna put them all on a stick right here 
So I'm gonna attach them to a stick that I can put in a plant. And it just makes them more legible. There you go. Be super cute in a floral arrangement to somebody, like if you were delivering flowers. <laughs> All right, let me do this first. So just transforming this using a napkin. And these napkins are like the guest bathroom napkins. I only used one portion of one of the napkins. I still have basically three-fourths of the napkin left. <laughs> so when I cut out the Hello Spring, I tried to get it pretty close to um, the letters because there's a slight pattern on the part where I'm adding the Hello Spring, and I wanted that to show through. So there's a slight pattern on that sign. Anyway, just being careful to make sure the words were in that portion below the terracotta part of it. Then adding just little flowers, and that's a little ladybug, um, and just placing them where they were aesthetically pleasing. I love when I go back and forth, like here, no, here, no, here, anyway, and then <laughs> and it ends up where it ends up. I also added a little ladybug up to the top on the leaves, just because they were so cute. So I did try and cut that really close because I didn't want the white to show through on the leaf, but it really doesn't because the napkins are so thin, just FYI. And then once I get all that on, um, I have to put the tumbling block on. You guys, when you put a tumbling block on, never put it all the way down to level with it because it won't stand up. You have to just like an eighth of an inch from the bottom so there's a slight lean. That's how they stand. So I thought it was all done with it and then I looked at it and I was like, I don't know, I think I'm going to add some twine around it. I'm glad I did. It was the perfect touch. And you know, I'm just using one section of rope. I take them apart. There's usually three twisted sections. I like that look. And I do it on the top and the bottom. And then I was like, yep, this piece is done. So cute. Such a cute little decor piece. So this is one of those, hello, my name is, this is the chalkboard signs, and this is a garden sign that says, weed it and reap. Um, I want to remove all this, leaving the dotted lines, because I want to put, um, like, the name of the plant and date that it was planted, um, so I'd like to leave those. So the only way I can find to do that is just literally by scraping. I tried nail polish remover, it doesn't work. And um, I've tried a, a Mr. Clean eraser. So, but with a little elbow grease, I, elbow grease, I can get it off. Of course, I could always just use this side, but I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to, to get this all off. And it's just with some scraping and I'm just gonna soak it in some water because it seems to help loosen up the paint. So I'm gonna use a little elbow grease, but if you wanted to do this project, obviously you could just use the back side. I just wanna use the lines that are on here to incorporate in what I'm gonna put. So I'm gonna scrape it all off. So after some soaking with wet paper towels and some scraping, I was able to get that fairly clean. I left the hello my name is, cause I'm gonna cover that up. And then removing the hanger that was on it, cause you know I'm gonna put a larger hanger on it just hot glued that read it and weep sign on weed it and reap <laughs> and then um i had this piece of nautical rope left over it come untwisted so you said i'm just retwisting it so it's twist each section and then twist again i love the look of that so i'm always dissecting the nautical rope and using it making it look how i want it to look glued it on there and that's pretty much it. Added a chalk writer, that pen right there, and just took twine, added it onto it, because you're going to need that to write on it, and then just wrote Daisy. Okay, so... 
These are the over the door hangers, but I had um, taken one of these apart for parts. And I'm gonna put this on it. I just wanna, at home, you guys could put this on one of the ones that has over the door hangers, but I believe the flowers would, would hit. So I'm gonna use the deconstructed one that I have to basically put this on there so I can put gloves and my tools and um, gardening tools on it. So it's just a cute way to use one of their signs. And then when I go to hang it, I'll use, I'll put like a screw in here. So that'll still be exposed so that I can hang it on um, a cabinet or a wall. I hope all that makes sense. <laughs> all right, let's go. So I just had to bend back that one part um, and th these bend pretty easily, but then I had to cover it up. So in the end, this worked out really well, adding this rope on each side. It covered that. It made it look a little more finished. It's super easy. And did the same thing on both the other side. And then that gave me a base to glue the truck onto also otherwise I would have been trying to glue it onto the metal which is different so by having the string there it gave me something that would attach it I tried to cover up the hole that is at the top of the sign and I do that by filling it with hot glue put something behind So I have one of the metal vases with the rope on it, some butterfly stickers, and then these are, um, they're bouquets, but these are like floral butterflies, if you can see, they're like a butterfly, um, like that. Anyway, so I have a bunch of different colors. I'm actually going to put them in this vase along with the metal butterfly, and then I think I'm going to put some of the stickers on the vase as well, super simple. I forgot to get some pool noodle to put in here though to put the sticks, the picks in, I'll go get that. So I just cut a piece of pool noodle off, glued it down there, um, just as something to stick my stems into. It works really, really well. And then fluffed these out a little bit. These were really extremely tattered picks. So like on this peach one, they had sprayed it with so much spray glitter that it had glued the whole thing together. So I did have to take my time and pull them apart. I guess I didn't look very carefully when I picked these up at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> but so I did. I just pulled them apart and tried to make them look as decent as I could and threw all of them in there. So there was four different colors and all at the same length. So I didn't change um, the picks level at all. They all went in un uncut. So they're all really floofy on the top together. And then I had the stickers and I was just going to put stickers on the vase, but then I took one of the one of the butterflies and glued it onto the vase on the rope part. And that kind of lets you know that everything that you're looking at in the in the vase is a floral butterfly. And then added a couple of the stickers on, and these are sort of three-dimensional, so I pulled up on the wings on the sticker so that it gave it a little, like it's flying almost. And then this is just that stuff I yet love to use. Okay, I have one of the little flower and garden pins. Um, this hanging sign that says staying alive with all of its elements. This one says farmer markets with all of its elements. I'm actually going to take these apart and use these for different things. Um, for this one, I think I'm going to use um, all of these parts except for the watering can I'm not going to use. I don't think. Maybe I will. I'm not sure. Anyway. Um, and then I'm going to use a couple of the parts of this one. I have some picks and I have one of the hanging 
plant basket liners, which I use for fillers. So let's get started. I'm probably going to need a couple of dowels too. So I couldn't get those things to bend, but I wanted the graphics on it. So I soaked them in water, which helped to scrape them off. Um, because I really loved the colors and I wanted to tie it all in with the other stuff that I was going to put into this vase or bucket, whatever you call it. So with a little scrape, I could get it off and then Mod Podged it on the front. So you can tell if you're careful, you can get them off of there. One had a little rip in it, but it was fine. I could fix that. So then I just Mod Podged it on. Looks super great. I love these graphics and, um, and then proceeded to fill the inside. And you'll see I use the other things off of one of the signs to put in there, which tied it all together so well. Threw a little purple in there um, to pop the purple that's in the graphics that I Mod Podged on. Looks so good. And then just adding in the other elements from the sign. And I didn't have, I didn't even put anything, I didn't put them on a dowel, I didn't put them on anything I just stuck them in there so this looks like they're planting like right in that pot right there with a little hoe in the fork whatever it is. so in the end it looks so cute loved it This cute little um, watering can and I just want to make it a, a decorative a decor piece and so I'm gonna use this tissue paper to Mod Podge all over it and then I'm gonna use some twine to wrap the handle and it should be like super cute little thing to put some florals in when I'm all done obviously I'm gonna use Mod Podge of course so let's get started on that. So first I removed that sign because it was going to change what it looked like when I put the tissue paper Mod Podge on. In hindsight, you guys, this would probably look a little bit better if I had painted the bucket white first because the green really pulls through. But Dollar Tree doesn't make a white chalk paint yet. So yet. Um, I still like the way it looks, but I'm just saying, if this was a project that you were going to do, you might want to consider painting it, it white on the background. So I'm just going through and Mod podge in the heck out of this and wrapping the tissue paper around. I'm just pulling it down around the bottom. I'm using a smaller brush because it helps me get it into all the cracks and crevices. I'm not too concerned with it being super straight because the pattern on this tissue paper is busy and so I think it's going to look fine and then after it dries I trimmed around the pouring spout right there um, because I'm going to paint that black blue I mean blue matched because there's blue in the tissue paper but it looks silly First, I'm going to wrap the handle in the twine obviously that's super easy just be careful that you're pulling it down and, and keeping it right on top of each other so you don't have any gaps and just went just glued it oh, I had to add another piece here but I just glued it to secure it this isn't anything that you're actually going to be handling all the time because it's a decorative piece so that makes a difference if I was going to be handling it all the time I would have secured it better than with just a hot glue so after I get that on I do paint the spout and when I painted the spout, I just used black chalk paint and sort of dabbed it on there lightly. The blue is dark enough that you don't see, um, like it doesn't come through. By the way, I used the lighter and burned the string there a little bit. So you can see you don't have to be too heavy on the black because the dark, the blue is dark and so it works really well. Then I took some of those laser cut butterflies Soaked them in water, so I got two, used the tacky glue, put two on the front, one up on the top, and on the one on the top, I bent the, the leaves a little bit so it looked more like it was fluttering when I glued it up there, 
And as you can see, I put a little greenery bush in there. In the end, it's such a cute little piece. It's so adorable. a garden flag and I have this tote that says love but I'm gonna deconstruct it I'm gonna deconstruct this um, what's it called chair pad and I'm also gonna use parts of this um, kitchen towel especially the hello sweet summer and I'm just gonna put different elements together to make a cute little garden flag let's go so I start by taking apart the tote. And I just used scissors. I didn't have a seam ripper. So I just took my little scissors and went all the way down and around and around and around until I got it all deconstructed. Then I just cut it directly in half. Now it had these folds in it and I cut off the handle. Um, so I went and got the burlap wet and then laid it on my counter so that it would be flat. And I'm sort of pulling out some strings to fray the ends here a little bit. And then I went and got it wet. Now you can see here I've gotten it wet and so it's laying flat. And I frayed the sides. You can see there's frayed. So I just cut out Hello Summer and I tried to cut it just sort of around it so it looked like it was supposed to be cut that way. So following some of the loops in and out and um, and then decided to cut out the bottom of the dish towel to give me my fruit element on the bottom. I don't end up using the chair pad because I was like, well, I'm not going to cut it up. I have everything I need here. And I left the seam part of that dish towel on the bottom to give some weight to the bottom of the flag. Um, that always helps if there's a little left to weight. Then I'm just using the Aliens Tacky Glue and putting it on there. Now the thing with burlap is burlap will soak everything in. So this takes a while to dry. I let it dry overnight actually. Adding some burlap ribbon in to cover up that seam down there and add just another cute little element. And then decided that I would also add it to the top. I had to add more glue on this. Again, I had burlap on burlap so it just soaks in the glue. So I added a trim piece exactly the same on the top um, to balance the flag out. And by the way, the flag will go onto a flag holder because the top of it is already seamed over. It's got a, a spot in it for something to go through. Then I started making little cotton twine flowers. Just wanted to add some more color, some more dimension to this flag. And I had a lot of spots, just wanted to pull everything together, make it more whimsical. So I just do a few of those, put a button in the middle, so cute, and then I put another button in the middle, um, so cute, I thought that was so cute. So then I added some more, I think I had like three more of these twine, cotton twine buttons, I mean um, flowers, just on the sign, just to add some color and whatnot. And in the end this worked out so well, all from a tote bag, a burlap tote bag. I don't have a flag holder. I'm going to have to buy one so I can put this up, but I think it's super adorable. And then after I make this twine flower, I do outline the watermelon with a black and white striped twine because it just felt like that popped it a little bit more. And I liked the way it looked. And the dish towel does fray a little bit, so I helped figure that would help some of the fraying on that. So I just add the twine around the watermelon. It did help. It just popped it. It was like so, it really, really, literally popped it. I probably should have done it with all the fruit, but that's okay. <laughs> I didn't. Then I just put a couple of clamps there to help it dry and stay together. And in the end, I added, I think, one more twine flower up on the top corner to give it some balance to the sign. And this is my first garden flag, and I think it's really cute. I really like it. From a dish towel and a tote bag. Two dollars. It's not bad. So there you go you guys. My first garden flag.
Okay, so I have the watermelon sign and one of the bicycle wheel wreath rings and some burlap colored ribbons, some baked cotton twine. And then this is like where I throw all of my, you know, flowers that fall off or whatever. But I have some, you know, random greenery in here and whatnot to add to a decoration on the wreath. So, all right, let's go. Watermelon sugar. <laughs> All right, so right now I am filling in the holes from where the hanging twine was with hot glue, and then I dab them with marker later. So I take a furniture marker in black and I outline those wheels. Look at how they pop when you outline them. Isn't that amazing? It looks so good. And then after I did the black, I got my glitter red marker to outline the rest of it. And just so you guys know, it takes a little longer when you use these because you have to shake them and push down for the ink to come out, but it looked so good finished off that truck perfectly. And then I went to attach the truck to the wreath and I knew hot glue, but I added a piece of wire just to for extra security for keeping that truck on there. And then once I wired it on right there, I just hot glued big plops of hot glue to hold it on all over the place. And you know, your problem is sometimes when you hang these things, if they go outside, the hot glue can melt in the sun. So just FYI, always be aware of that. Then I take this burlap ribbon, which matches so perfectly. It's such a tealish color, but look at how it matches that color on the truck. This is so simple. I went for a really simple design. I just put a bow on the top. I didn't overkill on the wreath because I think the wreath already has such wonderful elements. And then just adding in that black and red check. Almost looks Christmas, huh, guys? <laughs> but there's watermelon on the truck. be so easy to make this Christmas, though, wouldn't it? Mmm. There's another thought. Pick up an extra one of these signs and make it Christmas. So after I got that on, I was like, I really want to do more to the truck. I didn't like all the white that outlined the watermelon, and so I was trying to figure out a way to diffuse that. So I got some of my greenery out and sort of cut down some leaves to be smaller. I tried desperately to use those little pink balls that I thought looked like round watermelons. It really just didn't work. But I do take the leaves and I put glue in the middle of the leaves so it pinches them. Just FYI, that's one of the tricks I always do when I'm using leaves like this. And I'm sort of cutting them down to match so they wouldn't cover up the watermelon, but they would cover up some of the white. This is a little, you know, you don't have to do this part though. By the way, this could be completely left out and it's still a really cute sign. I just covered up that hole. And then um, after I do this, I kept looking at it, and I was like, oh, I just need something else to three-dimensionalize it with. And so I went and got popsicle sticks. And oh my gosh, this changed the sign so much. So I measured them all out, and um, there was a seam there, but I didn't think it really mattered because a lot of times when trucks have these sides, there'll be more than one piece. And so I thought it actually looked really realistic as long as my seam lined up. Then I took furniture marker, obviously, and I colored in, I colored all my um, popsicle sticks. I believe I used maple to color them all. And once I had that all done, yep, maple. Um, then I started to put it together. But before I did, I added a few more leaves on the side because I knew it would go under the, I think I do. I'm going to do it after. No, I put the bottom pieces down and then I add a few more leaves. And oh my gosh, when I got this, these wood pieces on there, the final parts of it, I was like, that changes it so much. I want to do it to like every truck I buy now that I, that have, you know, the faux rungs on the back, whatever they are. I don't even know what they're called, you guys. I'm so sorry. So after I get these all on, look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? It's like, oh my gosh. Talk about taking it from one level to the next. I added a few more leaves, but still that white around. I kept trying to cover up as much of the white as I could because it makes it look more real without all that white on there. I couldn't cover it all up. It was getting a little overkill on the leaves. So I end up taking a marker. Oh, and I tried to make a watermelon here. That didn't work either. So I ended up throwing those away. I tried really hard though. It just looked like, it looked like green blob in the back of the truck. So I threw those out. Didn't use those. I tried to make a piece of watermelon. I tried so hard. It just wasn't going to work. So in the end, I found a green marker. Um, I tried a couple of different colors, actually. 
and finally found one that was sort of a muted green, like the watermelon color. Watermelon sugar. And that would be that one. It was the metallic green Crayola marker from Dollar Tree. And that, that finished it off. It muted that white just enough for me. And then that was it. Okay, so these are the other parts of that sign. And first I'm gonna outline them in the black um, because it just really pops them and it makes them look more metal because they're supposed to sort of look like a faux galvanized um, label. Anyway, so I'm going to take these and outline them all first with the black. And then I think I'm gonna put them on a sign like this. Um, and then put this into a an arrangement. So let me outline them first. Well, I went to get a new marker and I had a thought while I was there. And so I think I might do a little um, tower of, uh-oh, got some glue on this. I think I'm going to do a little tower of these, and they will say we were meant to be. And then obviously we put greenery in them and stuff. So, um, I, I think this is what I'm going to do. I think so. <laughs> um, first of all, let me outline them, the side, each one of the so I took this brown paint that I just recently picked up actually at the Dollar Tree and I added water so I really watered it down so it's very liquid and I'm using it like a stain so I'm painting it on and then wiping it with a paper towel and it really gives it this stain look. I picked the color because there is a slight brown on the labels and it matches this like perfectly. But you could have, I could have left them unstained. I could have done um, a multitude of things, but I liked the way this looked. Then I went and was trying to measure, like, and I was like, never mind, I've got a good eye. I'm just going to glue them on there. So I used the Dollar Tree wood glue and wood craft glue and glued them on the, the signs onto each box. And once I was done with that, I had to start attaching them together. By the way, I did two with just the wood glue, and then I was like, why didn't I put hot glue on there too? So then I did. And this box looks a little light. I did go back and fix it. I added, took my used um, paper towel and wiped that one with some more stains. It came, the, for some reason, the last one came out really light. All right, now I'm measuring just to find the middle. So I'm doing this woodcraft glue, hot glue, and then putting a box. And we're just going to stair step them up, making sure that our words are in the right order. <laughs> it's like to want to glue it together and have it say, meant you were me or something. So on the last box, I put the glue on the wrong side. I had to remove it and, and redo it. It's like, oh, these things happen now. So, and then once we were all, see, that's where I did it. I was like, wrong side. What are you doing, Amy? So I had to get all that off and then put it on the right side. And then what I did was, at first I just put picks in there, and then I went and got that planter liner that I used instead of reindeer moss and put some of that into each one, just it's kind of like a little filler. And this came out so cute. Now you could put a multitude of plants in there. I ended up going with two types and instead of all being the same, but they could have all been the same. It doesn't matter. You could go by mint. So I'm going to make a rain chain and I'm going to start with this welcome sign and then I'm going to use some plant hanger chain and some of the little buckets that are in the 
in the, what do you call it, area. <laughs> the wedding area. And I am going to get a screwdriver and punch it through each one of these and then connect it all up and have a really cool ring chain. So I just took a um, screwdriver and put a hole in the bottom of them all, but it wasn't quite big enough. And so I had to get a bigger screwdriver. And I took this hanging wire and just attached it to the welcome sign, which already had a hook on the top of it, which is very convenient. And I'm off camera here just pounding the one thing closed so, so that I could attach it on there. And then all this really was was just getting a wide enough hole in the bottom of these buckets and feeding the, yep, see I keep going bigger and bigger on the screwdriver, and then just feeding the chain through. And then I used the handle of the bucket to go through and attach it to the chain. So easy. And this is going to be so cute outside. And I just kept going and going and going until I attached, I believe I ended up with 10 buckets on there, which was, it's about eight or nine feet long with some extra chain. So obviously you can make this whatever length you need it to be. Just so cute. Loved it. And it came out exactly the way I thought it was going to come out. So that's always good. And it works. Okay, I have these three, um, the nautical, well, not one of their voted folders. Anyway, I'm going to make a tower, and I'm going to add some um, ocean elements and some um, twine and whatnot. So basically, I'm thinking it's like ocean, land, and sky on my colors. Mm, kind of like that. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so I am going to put some stuff in them and build a tower, and then this one will be the votive holder on the very top. Okay? So, yeah, it's going to look cool when we're all done. All right, let's go. All right, so I went and got sand, and I poured sand in the bottom one, which is the dark blue, and then I started to put the starfish in, and I was like, mm. So I put two of them together, even though they don't exactly line up. It still gave me a three-dimensional look that I liked and put that in the sand. And there's no way that you can, like, put them in the sand and have them stay where they are. They're going to move around. So well, I guess that's like the ocean, right? And then I threw a couple of extra seashells in there. And then the next step was to attach the clear one. So I did that with the epoxy fix-all stuff from Dollar Tree and some hot glue. And the middle one is just sand and seashells. Seashells, and I was just going through to pick out the seashells that were the colorful ones because this glass was clear. And at first, I thought I'd use the white nautical. In the end, I used a, the regular single strand of the twine and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped to hide the seam where the two votive holders met. I just twirled, 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 and twirled and went, and it looks really cute when I'm all done. This was the most work that the whole project took. And then I just knotted it there because I had left a tail when I started. So then I go ahead and put the top one on. And this one I'm going to put the votive in. So I'm wrapping it with the twine, get all the way around. And then I take my votive and I decide I'm going to decorate this up a little bit. And so I search through all of my seashells looking for like the perfect ones. And you'll see here in a minute, I decorate the votive with some seashells. Make sure it worked first. Always make sure your little turn on votive lights work. And then also make sure when you're gluing on these seashells that you can still get to the on and off switch. And it came out really cute. I just hot gluing three little shells on it. It's super cute. Stuck it in there with some other shells. I was looking again for really colorful ones because now I'm going to put some shells on the outside of the tower. So I wrap twine around the top. I'm off camera here. I'm so sorry, you guys. When it's a tall item like this, it's harder. And I just looked for some seashells that I like the color so I could tie them off on there and found another one. 
slide that off on there. And then I used the laser cut wood seashell right there and I attached that onto just this, this final little touch and this came out beautiful.